Hi, it's Sue with today's Bible reading. I'm reading January 3rd, Leviticus 8 through 10 from the World English Bible. And today we're talking about the consecration of Aaron and his sons for priestly ministry, the beginning of their priestly ministry, and also the death of two of his sons, Nadab and Abihu, who sadly did not recognize what they had in their hands. They didn't fear God, much like Ananias and Sapphira, I think. They didn't fear God. They didn't understand the move of God that was happening at the time. Um, There's a scripture in, I forget what, I think this is in Exodus. It says, they will teach my people the difference between what is holy and what is common, what is ceremonially clean and unclean. The difference between what is holy and common or clean and unclean. And that is what Nadab and Abihu failed to do. And you'll see that as we're reading today's verses. That's it all the way over in, in chapter 10. I say all the way over, but these chapters are, they're pretty short. Okay, chapter eight, verse one. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, take Aaron and his sons with him and the garments and the anointing oil and the bull of the sin offering and the two rams and the basket of unleavened bread and assemble the congregation at the door of the tent of the meeting. Moses did as Yahweh commanded him, and the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent of meeting. Moses said to the congregation, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded to be done. Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. He put the tunic on him, tied the sash on him, clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod on him. And he tied the skillfully woven band of the ephod on him and fastened it to him with it. He placed the breastplate on him. He put the Urim and Thummim in the breastplate. He set the turban on his head. He set the golden plate, the holy crown, on the front of the turban as Yahweh commanded Moses. Now, this is powerful, y'all, because this is the first time these priestly garments were ever put on someone. We already went through how they were skillfully made, what the materials were made of, the, the anointed and skillful workers that made them. But now here's this the ceremony where it Aaron is donning the clothing, Aaron and his sons are all donning the clothing. So it says, um, he set the turban on his head. He set the golden plate, the holy crown on the front of the turban as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and sanctified them. He sprinkled it on the altar seven times and anointed the altar with all its vessels and the basin and its base to sanctify them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. Moses brought Aaron's sons and clothed them with tunics and tight sashes on them and put headbands on them as Yahweh commanded Moses. He brought the bull of the sin offering and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull of the sin offering. He killed it and Moses took the blood and put it around the horns of the altar with his finger and purified the altar and poured out the blood at the base of the altar and sanctified it to make atonement for it. He took all the fat that was on the innards and the cover of the liver and the two kidney and their fat and Moses burned it on the altar. But the bull and its skin and its meat and its dung, he burned with fire outside the camp, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He presented the ram of the burnt offering. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. He killed it, and Moses sprinkled the blood around the altar. He cut the ram into its pieces, and Moses burned the head and the pieces and the fat. He washed the innards and the legs with water, and Moses burned the whole ram on the altar. It was a burnt offering for a pleasant aroma. It was an offering made by fire to Yahweh, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He presented the other ram, the ram of consecration. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. He killed it, and Moses took some of its blood and put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear and on the thumb of his right hand and on the great toe of his right foot. He brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put some of the blood on the tip of their right ear and on the thumb of their right hand and on the great toe of their right foot, and Moses sprinkled the blood around the altar. He took the fat, the fat tail, all the fat that was on the innards, the cover of the liver, the two kidneys, and their fat, and the right thigh, and out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before Yahweh, he took one unleavened cake, one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer, and placed them on the fat and on the right thigh. He put all these in Aaron's hands and in his son's hands and waved them for a wave offering before Yahweh. Moses took them from their hands and burned them on the altar on the burnt offering. They were a consecration offering for a pleasant aroma. It was an offering made by fire to Yahweh. 
Moses took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yahweh. It was Moses' portion of the ram of consecration as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar and sprinkled it on Aaron, on his garments and on his sons and on his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aaron, his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Boil the meat at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it and the bread that is in the basket, consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. What remains of the meat and of the bread you shall burn with fire. You shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting for seven days until your days of consecration are fulfilled, for he shall consecrate you seven days. What has been done today, so Yahweh has commanded to do, to make atonement for you. You shall stay at the door of the tent of meeting day and night seven days and keep Yahweh's command that you don't die, for so I am commanded. Aaron and his sons did all things which Yahweh commanded by Moses. Now, did you catch that part? excuse me did you catch the part where he said that you don't die let me back up a little you shall stay at the door of the tent of meeting day and night seven days and keep Yahweh's command that you don't die for so I am commanded Aaron and his sons did all the things which Yahweh commanded by Moses now did Nadab and Abihu listen when he said that I wonder chapter 9 verse 1 on the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he said to Aaron, Take a calf from the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without defect and offer them before Yahweh. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Take a male goat for a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both a year old, without defect for a burnt offering, and a bull and a ram for a peace offering to sacrifice before Yahweh, and a meal offering mixed with oil for today Yahweh appears to you. They brought what Moses commanded before the tent of meeting. All the congregation came near and stood before Yahweh. Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded that you should do, and Yahweh's glory shall appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make atonement for them as Yahweh commanded. So Aaron came near to the altar and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. The sons of Aaron presented the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the cover from the liver of the sin offering he burned upon the altar as Yahweh commanded Moses. The meat and the skin he burned with fire outside the camp. He killed the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons delivered the blood to him, and he sprinkled it around the altar. Now it's interesting because Moses did it the first time, almost like he was showing them, you know, what he had seen from the Lord. And also... He was the one sanctifying them. Now they're sanctified to go make these offerings for the people. So it says, <clears throat> excuse me. They delivered the burnt offering to him piece by piece and the head. He burned them upon the altar. He washed the innards and the legs and burned them on the burnt offering on the altar. He presented the people's offering and took the goat of the sin offering, which was for the people, and killed it and offered it for sin like the first. He presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the ordinance. He presented the meal offering and filled his hand from there and burned it upon the altar in addition to the burnt offering of the morning. He also killed the bull and the ram, the sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. Aaron's sons delivered to him the blood which he sprinkled around the altar and the fat of the bull and of the ram, the fat tail and that which covers the innards and the kidneys and the cover of the liver. And they put the fat upon the breast and he burned the fat on the altar. Aaron waved the breast and the right thigh for a wave offering before Yahweh as Moses commanded. Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them, and he came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting and came out and blessed the people, and Yahweh's glory appeared to all the people. Let me back up. Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting and came out and blessed the people, and Yahweh's glory appeared to all the people. Fire came out from before Yahweh and consumed the burnt offering and the fat upon the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered strange fire before Yahweh, which he had not commanded them. Fire came out from before Yahweh and devoured them, and they died before Yahweh. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what Yahweh spoke of, saying, I will show myself holy to those who come near me, and before all people I will be glorified.
Aaron held his peace. Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Draw near, carry your brothers from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they came near and carried them in their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had said. Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons, Don't let the hair of your heads go loose, and don't tear your clothes, so that you don't die, and so that he will not be angry with all the congregation. In other words, they don't mourn. Um, I guess they would what, let their hair, maybe pull their hair out. It says, don't let the hair of your head go loose or tearing your clothes. You know, tearing their clothes was a sign of mourning too. So Moses said, don't do that. Um, let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which Yahweh has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting, lest you die, for the anointing oil of Yahweh is on you. They did according to the word of Moses. Then Yahweh said to Aaron, you and your sons are not to drink wine or strong drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting or you will die. This shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. You are to make distinction between the holy and the common and between the unclean and the clean. Okay, so there is that same exact phraseology, not the same verse, but the same phraseology that I, I quoted before I started reading. So it says, you make a distinction between the holy and the common, between the clean and the unclean. Boy, do we need that in our society today. I think that's 50% at least of our ills in society around the world. Verse 11, you are to teach the children of Israel all the statutes which Yahweh has spoken to them by Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons who were left. Take the meal offering that remains of the offering of Yahweh made by fire and eat it without yeast beside the altar, for it is most holy. And you shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your portion and your son's portion of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. For so I am commanded. The wave breast and the uh, heaved thigh you shall eat in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you, for they are given as your portion and your son's portion out of the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the children of Israel. They shall bring the heaved thigh and the wave breast with the offerings made by fire of the fat to wave it as a wave offering before Yahweh. It shall be yours and your sons with you as a portion forever, as Yahweh has commanded. Moses diligently inquired about the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burned. He was angry with Eleazar and with Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, who were left, saying, Why haven't you eaten the sin offering in the place of the sanctuary, since it is most holy? And he has given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before Yahweh. Behold, its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You certainly should have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. So they're already messing up. Verse 19. Aaron spoke to Moses, Behold, today they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh, and such things as these have happened to me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been pleasing in Yahweh's sight? When Moses heard that, it was pleasing in his sight. And that's the last sentence. So I want to read those last two verses again, because I'm trying to take them in. Aaron spoke to Moses, Behold, today I have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh, and such things of these has happened to me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been pleasing in Yahweh's sight? When Moses heard that, it was pleasing in his sight. Well, I guess they're just going to leave us hanging there until next, till tomorrow. I'm not sure I understand those last two verses. Please feel free to comment if you have some insight or any thoughts about today's reading. And tomorrow we will be reading 11 through 13 from uh, this book of Leviticus. Until next time, God bless you.